Hello my brothers and sisters of the sword and today all we are getting back into a reaction video on Thing Thran's channel and this time he is going to use the infamous Gallo Glass Battle Axe or as he puts it in the title as the Irish Two-Handed Battle Axe. We've been kind of complicating uh, thinking of names for this because apparently not that many people look up the name Gallo Glass or Sparth which is in my mind, very weird and very annoying to the fact that they don't, and no one knows these guys in these two words in general. So, yeah. But we're actually going to see him test out his weapon on not just helmets, but as well, mail. So we're going to see what damage it does to the head. Now, uh, apparently this is going to be just done to the head and necks. It's not going to be done to the body yet. Uh, but hopefully soon he will get to that soon. But, for right now... Get your gallo glass helmets and be ready for the killing. Let's get started, shall we? Hey, Brian here, and we're back with the 15th century or the 13th to 15th century gallo glass warrior. And we have. Okay, yeah, he uh, said 13th to 15th. It is actually very close, and uh, I want to put this out here. The Gallo Glass were used from the 13th to the 16th century. So he's off by one century, but I do have to say to the fact that this axe would have actually slowly died out by the time of the 16th century, because one, it was light and effective, yes, and they still did use it, but they were mostly using axes with a more wider brim like this by the time of the 16th century. So he's not wrong. So, yeah. And... These are probably, he actually is going to say very soon in the video on, uh, because we, as I said, we have been messaging each other for Facebook and such, and Messenger and all that, and he says that he might need an axe like this. So, uh, we'll get to that very soon on why. You have Celtic Templar, you can go by and check him out on YouTube, he's done a whole series, which that's what we're doing, is a series on the Sparth Axe that he sent us, and he sent us all different types of goodies, he sent us flat mail riveted armor with uh, solid rings. He sent us round, all riveted mail armor. I even sent us a brush leather coat. I don't have that out here because it keeps raining off and on sporadically, and I didn't want to have to run that type of armor in and out of the house because it is... Okay, uh, this is the type of armor he's talking about that I have sent him a while back. I have sent him mail of two designs, flat and round riveted, and as well I if I remember correctly, it was uh, buff coat leather. Buff coat leather is the type of armor that which was used during the time of the late 15th and as well used in the 16th century, especially by British forces. However, it was also used by the Irish during the time of the 15th century, especially the early 15th century, as Lechteana armor or Kern armor. This was light and yet effective armor, and was mostly made out of, uh, well, ox hide, or some sort of hide, and this actually could semi, somewhat def stop certain weapons, but it's very varied on the equipment, uh, or as well the weapon that was used, so, yeah, but my best bet, if someone got hit with an axe, I, my best bet, the limb would go flying, that's my best thought, that's, my, that's, that's literally my best thought. But mostly that was meant to stop projectile weapons. So maybe that's an idea for you, Thran. So yeah. Kind of cumbersome to run around. But I'd like to thank him for that. He sent us the axe. He's going to be sending a scale coif. So everybody give him props and go by and like uh, like all his videos, of course. But uh, subscribe to his channel. And while you're, while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. As well, y'all, do subscribe to his cha uh, thank Thran's channel. Because <laughs> one... I love his videos since, uh, well, when they first came out. In fact, I think he originally started with Deadliest Warrior, and it's built up from there, which I'm kind of lo loving that about that, so yeah. Dyers, because we're going to have a whole series on this, and I'm sure you're going to want to come back and watch the Sparth Axe. This is an axe that was used by the Gallo Glass Warriors. They were Norse Gaelic Warriors from the 13th to 15th century. They were like a cult or a sect, very much like their ancestors, Viking mercenaries. 
I'm not going to say it was Vikings, but it was Vikings. Damn it, right now you got me saying it. They see the Norse mercenaries that came over to the country. They intermixed with the clans and created such an awesome group of warriors that still used sparth or big old two-handed Dane-like axes. This axe here is made in a specific way. I think it's because of hitting armor. The Irish version of this Donegal axe that was from the Dublin Museum, that's what it's replica, a replica of, the specific Irish design, I think, was so the tips, because normally you have horned and beaked axes, especially on the big, broad Dane axes of the late per period two-handed axes, as people know them, uh, the Viking axes, the pole axes. This one is curved. Why would you do that? Well, I think it's to protect the tips, because they were hitting a lot of plate. A lot of people had plate armor, or coat of plates when they were around, full plate. This is actually very true, because one, the curve on the top is actually what to reinforce it. Because one, if you hit somebody, like, say, right here where the tip is, this is actually known to puncture plate armor like this. So even if this was, say, uh, uh, hardened eight, uh, 16 or 14 gauge steel, like that it would have been fire treated or hardened, uh, you're most likely going to end up having a, a your bell rung and you're probably going to end up dying very slowly as you get immense of blood to the brain. Play a lot of mail. So the stuff they were going against, they didn't want to damage the points on the axe because they wouldn't do them as much good if they're damaged. And they must have done Just a look how quickly you can move that axe. That's saying how like these things work. Force and power. And we still hear the legend like we did earlier period about the Dane axe, these big figure eight swings and huge crushing blows. If they didn't even cleave into the other warrior, they would actually... Crack skulls, break necks, oh, uh, break ribs. That's still so uh, just the sheer to concussion out. could lay a man out. So we're going to find out today if that's true, if they were going along the field just laying everybody out. And uh, we're going to try with this helmet here. And this helmet's very much, much like the Lohenny find, which was a, a gallo glass. That is actually very true, the Lohenny. And these are, I think he actually says these are gallo glass helmets. Like this, it... Technically, I want to put this out here. These are actually not actually gallo glass, but Irish style nobleman helms. These actually were used by Irish noblemen. So, and gallo glass captains or gallo glass nobles adopted these because one of its design. Now, many people don't realize this, but these are actually based off of the Irish style uh, bassinet or the Irish bacalacteer or style helmet which are, looks like this, and there are, there are literally nobody out there that makes these. However, Thran's helmet, the one he's wearing right now, is actually the most near identical to how I could actually see of an Irish Galagos helm, or a uh, Irish-style bassinet, because one, Irish and Scottish bassinets were known to actually have a central spiral point. In other words, it would have been... Well, a central spiral. It would have been pointed upwards instead of towards the side that would have deflected this way. Because this central spiral means that it could deflect it downward this way. In fact, this is actually based off of the Norman-style helmets, for example, that had that central uh, nasal guard. And, well, they later decided to grow the helmet out. So, pretty much, if you take a look at this, this is technically just a a more enclosed version of the Norman nasal helm. So, yeah. Now, many people accidentally mistaken these for bar boots. I have previously in my own time, but it's kind of weird because one of these things are bar boots and they're not. Because one, uh, many people accidentally mistaken the Irish and Scottish bassinets or Highland bassinets or whatever you want to call it as. I just call it the Celtic bassinet because one, it's been used both in Scotland and Ireland. So, yeah. And these were... Well, that of an open face, like, just imagine this helmet, uh, helmet like this, but without the nasal guard and without these cheek guards. So in doing so, it just pretty much holds it open, but you have this central spiral that keeps your head from taking an extreme force blow from above. Which is kind of why many people in that region of Europe actually preferred this. Now, I will make a video probably on the evolution of bassinets and the different models, because... Uh, there are different variations depending on the region you're from, so yeah. And the people of Ireland and Scotland used this design for probably about two centuries before they started to switch out of them. Uh, 
So it was probably used for a very long time for a good reason. Us warrior helmet, like a barbute, it has a lot of those attributes. It has a lobster tail kind of back, so it's kind of a bastardized uh, <laughs> helmet or helmet. We've got cheek plates. All this stuff's plausible within the period. Between 13th and 15th century later period, this is definitely plausible. And it's a 16 gauge. We have pierced it before, deep enough to injure the man, but with a pointed object that was a fox. Uh, you will see a clip of that possibly here. But Ooh. let's get going. Let's see still what they, I need to do a review on that with one. This, and if this protects him well enough, we'll kind of lower the armor and keep going. Well, that was certainly a crushing blow. We hit double Ooh. metal here, and that just crushed it. I don't need to get a close-up of that, but... I can already tell one thing. That thing might have actually broken his neck and caused it to go down. This is probably why the, uh, Gal the Irish and the Scottish bassinets were probably used for a very long time because of, well, reason like this. Because, one, all you need to do is tuck your neck, and what you could actually do is... When you tuck your neck, your shoulders end up lifting the sh said helmet a little bit. In doing so, it gives you a little ample space to protect your skull. Which is kind of funny, but actually pretty impressive if you think about it. That had to hurt. I'm sorry, this man would be laying out probably from the impact. Creased well. Didn't do much to our edge. Oh. Oh, really good steel, by the way. If you want to know how to get one of these, look in the description down below. Again. We still creased that horribly. That was a dent from hell. Ooh. I need to get more of a tip shot if I want to get into this thing, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. Ah! Wow! Ooh. He's bleeding. He is bleeding. <laughs> oh, you see it from that. I might hit it one more time for good measure, but we will look at this. He's got blood coming out of his skull. This is amazing. Oh! Another massive oh! blood cutting into the helmet. That is a new cut for sure. Too far forward. That's exactly what I thought this axe was for. The front is taking some damage from this, but it was so it wouldn't break the tip of the axe off and you could do these type of blows. Ah. He's enjoying it too much. Ah. <laughs> that one turned on me. We got some good stuff here. Let's go ahead and look at it and see what we have. This is going to be good. The axe did take some damage from the armor because it was a very sharp edge and it needs to be straightened a little bit and sharpened. But that's not our Let's issue. Let's see the damage. Issues. Did our axe do what we thought it might be able to do? These are tremendous. We haven't had anything hit with this amount of force yet. Oh my! To do this kind of stuff. Oh, too. I want to put this out here. Just look. Only damage potential that thing could cause to a guy wearing 16 gauge helmet. Now here's the thing. If it was hardened, it might have not been that bad. But holy hell, because that was enough damage to kill. And here's the thing, it didn't need to pierce the skull to kill this guy, it pretty much just needed to crack the skull, the literally the helmet enough, to pretty much uh, give it a concussive blow. So in other words, this guy is dying internally. Ugh. Rivets loose. That's a whole band, plus this is actually one unit of metal that's been hammered out. So we need to remove this. Let's see what we got going on. We got blood leaking out of the helmet. Like, see it? Come, come around, make sure we get that. That is just Oh, dripping. no. This helmet was already slightly damaged, but I do believe that is a new hole. This is definitely smushed in, too. Oh, yeah, that's because of the weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those impacts and the heat from the helmet. Oh, yeah. Oh. The head is cracked open is what it looks like. Oh no! It looks like we cracked our skull is what happened to it. So what it's done is it effectively cut into the helmet. We have a hole 
here where the tip hit and we got a cut and it just went straight on from there and just damaged the skull this one cut in as well this is depth yeah this is like pretty much well one if I all know what he means by this it's like this because the way the tip cut is like this that means that with this reinforcement it's able to penetrate into skulls like this meaning it's kind of like someone took a like somebody took like a dagger for example and just did an ultimate uh like somebody gave like the hulk for example a dagger for example and he thrusts it into somebody's head helmet like that even if you're wearing good armor there's probably a good chance and reason that the hulk probably penetrated your skull with the tip of the blade so that's saying how dangerous this is definitely cut from the tip of the actual axe so that means the axe can cut the 16 gauge metal it didn't go into the head but it's farther forward oh it did right here it actually hit the skull the hole here that shows this man would be unconscious and most likely at that period would have died from that impact even the other impacts i wouldn't have wanted those things would have the helms were always as thick as everybody imagines yes this thing could be 12 gauge soft bullets very rare or it could be just something like this 16 gauge yeah it it did not protect this man at all More, he had like uh most of the time the infamous uh which many, many people don't understand this Armor did deflect bullets at the time, and sometimes they still do, depending on the gauge of steel. I have actually tested out this theory on my own armor, uh, both breastplate and laminar. Laminar didn't work out so well, but when it came to our breastplate, it did deflect some of the bullets, which kind of whizzed over us, which I was scared of as hell, and, the, and we were firing modern bullets at at least, I think it was... 16 gauge mild steel, 14 gauge mild steel, I can't remember if it was. And the bullets got deflected one way into the other, which we were scared actually after that, and we had to back up our distance a little bit to be safe. But the closer we got, the more uh, penetration power we got. But for firearms at that time, 12 gauge was did deflect armor, and as well, even did 14 gauge, depending on if it was hardened or not. Uh... But the most common armor would have been somewhere between 16 to 14 gauge steel for the average soldier. Because one, they can't afford the best armor to deflect bullets at the time. So, yeah. Padding. He didn't have a coy for extra padding under it, but still. We're going to go back with our neck hit. Ooh, a neck hit now. And I, I would say that I think his nose is probably melting. <laughs> oh yeah unfortunately ballistic shell does have that problem if it's against something red hot if it's against something red hot that's uh black metal in the sun and the sun is starting to come out because we have thunderstorms that's why i don't have all the male armor out here that was sent to me and everything to show it off <laughs> i didn't want to risk it okay we do have some damage to this axe we don't have damage towards the back and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to use the back of the axe and we're going to try to use our skill here and go for a neck blow. I just want to see what it does. Oh, I, hit the, I hit the cheek plate. It cut into it and scored it. But I don't oh, know it. But that would have possibly knocked it. Oh my god. I think it actually... Def <laughs> Even though the cheek guard deflected the... Uh, Axe blade, the, the cheek guard literally just got bent it in. So much so that, one, that would have resolved in him probably being very uncomfortable and most likely soon to lose the helmet. Get him out. That could have been a complete knockout. That could have been a complete knockout. Look at the way it's deformed. We'll look at that in a second. Oh, oh. And then we went into the stand and... Right to his shoulder. That's horrible. Oh, and here we see also what happened to the gambeson. Literally, that sliced through it. And that was the power into his shoulder. So, just imagine if the mail was also covering that. I think we would have actually had a bus, couple of busted chain mail links. <laughs> it cut the gambeson. So this I can install gambeson. 
would not be a match for it. We'll look at our, our uh, damage in a second. Oh! I gotta hit the mail. Could you tell, Kenny? Go try it one more time. I couldn't, I couldn't see where it hit. Oh, that was a mail hit. See what we've right in the jugular. And the neck was a bit low. That would have definitely hurt you. Oh, show us the, the carnage. The inside of the neck could have pushed uh, blood up into the brain, knocking you out just like a judo chop. Just like that. We hit right here. Scored our rings. But his neck seems to be okay. He is bleeding. So. Okay. One more, and then we'll go to the coin. I want to point this out here. Getting hit in the neck with something like this, you would have actually had a broken neck, even if you were in good padding and male. <coughs> There's a most likely option that this could have seriously injured or killed you in the process just with the blow alone. In fact, there are many accounts that state the Gallo Glass actually mostly did a side swiping swing towards someone's neck even if the say cheat guard like something like this could have deflected it there could have been a high possibility it would have slipped right under and got me right here where then it could have gone up and into my chin so that's saying how horrifying this could have been I know that was right in. Hell yeah. Oh. And we're using towards the back of the axe with the front of the beak. Hit with the beak, excuse me. Hit with the beak of the axe. And it kind of caught on that ring. Another deck hit. I think he's okay from that. Let's take all this off and get a really good look at what this did to the helmet. Before I fall from the heat. Oh, we are. Well, just I have to agree with you there, Thran. Uh, now, now you all understand. Uh, a couple of videos back on my... Uh, one Gallo Glass video for the, I think it was the, yeah, I think it was the 15th century Gallo Glass, uh, Warrior, uh, I was getting heat stroke like you wouldn't believe, so, uh, yeah, and here's the thing, he's wearing a tunic and mail, try wearing tunic, mail, and a gambeson underneath that, it's not gonna end well, in fact, I'm wearing my gambeson right now, but, yeah, uh, so, yeah, that's us see how, uh, yeah, horrifying that here, is. And then we're switching out stuff. Oh, the helmet looks terrible. Oh, oh, yeah, you see that gap. We smushed it. We didn't break the jaw, but oh. that cheek plate bending in, if anybody can see that, would have knocked you out. This style of helmet with 16 gauge, not, you know, heavier, uh, if it wasn't hardened or anything, that's caved in. Oh. That's at least a knockout in attorney for sure. <laughs> right? That... Literally, just look at that. That is definitely a dead gallo glass right there if you hit him with that. So, yeah. Oh, that is definitely a dead Irish chieftain. And these hits, of course, went through. And then the neck hits on the male. The male seemed to protect the most with the Akaton style gambus, and we have no cuts or anything. But I can't promise that those impacts hitting those arteries and everything on the side of the neck, like a judo chop hitting you in the neck, wouldn't have knocked him completely unconscious or injured his neck. Any of these blows very well could have. Yeah. I'm getting this oven off. And we've got our <laughs> male coif, and then we have an Akaton style uh, padding and four layers of uh, heavy linen, uh, actually made into a quilted arming cap. He has the uh, also the arming material he had here earlier, same thing. It's very thick, very, very durable, very tough, lots of padding. And this is not historically accurate. This is budded male, but we're going to be cutting against it. So cutting against the budded male means chances are it may knock rings out by unbending them, but we're not going to cut through this. There is no way that this edge is going to cut through these rings. Okay, I want to put this out here. Yeah, that's actually true. You cannot cut through male. That is mostly Hollywood myth. Even budded male can stop cutting blows. Uh, with a certain weapon, but as long as you're wearing proper equipment such as proper padding and such, you can easily deflect certain blows. Uh, thrusts on the other hand, not so much, so yeah.
and go directly into the head from the edge. No. What we're checking here is the impact. So over this uh, arming cap, that's a Akaton style, you know, where it's stuffed with batting and four layers of cloth quilted, very, very tightly uh, stitched, and it's very thick, that's what's going to be absorbing our impact. That and a little bit of the male, you know, dispersing the energy. We also have that around the neck, so we can come back and hit the neck, too, and try to do the... It's going to tear this all the heck. I'm going to have to repair it. But this is 14-gauge, oh. the 3-8 inch rings. It was from Medieval Shop, sent to me a while back. It's more for reenactment and ornamentation. But I can attest that wearing this with a smaller ring size in the 14-gauge over multiple layers of proper gambeson, layered gambeson cloth, stopped 70-pound arrows. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's actually true. And as well, the further of centuries you go into, such as by the time of the 15th century, mostly you're getting mail that, like, uh, something like this, that would have been of 6 millimeter rings. So in other words, a lot smaller, which makes it a lot harder to thrust into. Unlike with this one, which is 8 millimeter. So, yeah, you see my point. So, in fact, the smaller the rings, even though a little more expensive, were actually better to stop thrusting weapons. So, yeah, that's saying something there. 65 to 75 pound arrows were stopped by this easily. And it didn't even damage it that badly. So, just to give you an idea that it can stop stuff, it's just not reliable. Let's see if we can destroy that hit. He has been cooking a little bit. I had to take a break for a minute. I changed armor, everyone. Oh, I got something that was cold. Out of, the, out of the house, and I also thought it was a good point to bring up this in old videos has stopped arrows. So. Oh, <laughs> that was crazy. What the hell we happened? We cut the rings, but we didn't cut in the head. We just like totally uh, removed them. <laughs> Now we gotta figure out how to get it back on his head. That's crazy. Caddy, this is not good. Rings, but we didn't cut the we didn't cut the rings. What we did is we caught the rings and basically pulled it apart. This is a glance. It caused it to glance, so we didn't kill him. We didn't kill him. Yes. That was just a uh, glancing blow, so he's sitting there laughing at us. He said, You're saying reenactment mail. Oh no, lad. This is the real deal. Well, that's what he's saying, right, Caddy? I'm not. If you stop smoking, I'm gonna shit myself and run away. That skinny toilet or something. Ah. Oh! oh! I would say it didn't cut through. We don't have a cut in this. The gambus is protected him. We need to look at this. That's oh! bad. This is real bad. If you don't have a helm, at least what you had, I had on earlier on him, or like that bassinet I was wearing, this is what would happen. My finger is in the indentation. Oh, no. This is just yeah, really bad. I realize there's a split right down the middle of his face. Oh. I'm going to put this out here. That is the sheer power of the axe. This is why the Galaglass preferred axes over the sword. In fact, even when the Galaglass were given a chance to use something like... This, the two-handed greatsword, they preferred the axe because it had more power. So, that's saying something of how horrifying this is. So, even if you did, uh, even if you were like a badass mercenary, say, with a greatsword, you yeah, huh, I'm a, I have a greatsword, huh, huh. Here's the thing. The guy with the greatsword is probably going to get himself beat the living hell out of him with the guy who's using an axe, which is slightly lighter, and has a lot more power. So, yeah. Blade attacks like this won't be as dangerous as that of getting killed with a Galaglass great axe. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to pull this up and look at it. It smashed his brain panic. Oh, yeah. He's, oh! No it's destroyed. I don't need to do much with that. I can just show you like that. I might come back and hit it again real quick. Why not? He's gone. He's and this dead. This is so hot, it is burning my fingers. That's why I had to take the other nail off, and I don't know how much longer it's down here. I almost had a heat stroke. I felt like it. 
Oh, this poor guy, he's, he's toast. So it didn't cut through it. That's the point we're trying to make. That wasn't a cut. That was just impact. That was just extreme impact. Now, he wants to see if it could break the neck. And I don't know if we could break a neck just by the sheer impact, but we could try. Gambison didn't cut, but we may have broke our neck. <laughs> oh. oh, you didn't, you just went a little above and beyond of breaking the neck. Oh. Not only did they give it, the guy a uh, permanent cut, like scalping, uh, but as well, it could have probably broken his neck, so yeah. We busted the spine. Come get Caddy. Oh. You're missing it all. Caddy. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you broke his spine, I heard. From the neck. I broke it from the base of the spine when I came through with the impact. What it did. <laughs> if if Thread says that is the worst thing he has ever seen, I probably would not doubt it because. There are accounts that state that the battle axe has such power that it can break the neck. Oh, so. And the heads would be lopsided and fall as the body would bear with it. Now this is a, now this is a quote from a battle during the time of the War of the Roses when both Lancastrian and Yorkist forces had gallo glass mercenaries and stated on the horror pow horrifying power on how the battle axe broke the necks of mounted knights. It even stated on how the limbs were so broken that even plate armor would not help in deflecting the blows, but in such would actually make it harder for the knights to move and make it easier for the Galagos to further finish them off. So that's thinking of how bad this is. Is you know how we have a skull that was, you know, already shattered? Yeah. We broke the way our spine works. We broke the spine on the inside of the skull. All right, look on the side over here. Oh, no. It's destructive. We broke the spine inside the skull, if you can see inside here. Uh, the skull that was cracked broke the rest of the way, and it's separated. So this whole head is basically falling off here. Yeah, so I think that Connor was 100% right. I don't know if it would have done it with a full helmet, but this is just, yeah, ridiculous. I uh mean, -oh. do I get to keep the burn time? We're going to set him back up here. Uh -oh. One last year in the Oh, uh, I don't know. He might want that later. He might need that brain pan. I don't know. He might want it. You never... I don't think he'll be doing much with it anymore. You can have it, Caddy. That is the nastiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the impact was just so devastating. Gallo glass approved! It didn't cause that. It didn't <laughs> cause in the internal. It melts on the outside and the inside stays completely cold. But that is just nasty. Oh, I can't tell what how people go and really thank you for this. That was what you were talking about. Possibly like something that does so much damage. I mean, a real person that would have came up when it came apart like that, the flesh. But oh. it's just the impact was so extreme that would have caused so much vertebrae damage. At the very least, you'd have a whiplash effect where you wouldn't be fighting anymore. Correct, Daddy? Exactly. Just as I said, the heads would have been broke. The literally the neck would have been so badly broken that the sheer impact now as he said the way the helmet is as long as someone can tuck their head they could probably keep it protected but um due to the fact that axe is faster than certain weapons there could be a chance that one the second blow could come in and you're not prepared for it and guess what you end up having your neck fully exposed this is why gallo glass preferred something that actually protected their neck a slight bit for centuries. This is why they went away from the Norman style nasal helmet and went more with a type of helmet that fully enclosed the head to prevent <coughs> uh, the blow to, from affecting them. <laughs>
I'm sorry, I can't stop myself from laughing. I'm actually choking on my own spit. <laughs> uh, but he... But yeah. <coughs> As I said, the blow would have been so badly seen that many warriors could have actually lost their heads without them even falling, well, from their heads. In fact, it's actually stated and quoted from a Irish monk at a battle in Ireland that took place during, I think it was like 13th, uh, I think it was like late 13th or uh, the 14th century, if I remember correctly, the early 14th to mid 14th century, and Irish, like literally the Galagos, who which were hired by Irish, mer like Irish nobles and such, hired them to fight against the uh, heavily mounted and armored knights. And the knights were obliterated, even though they were wearing male armor and wearing great helms. There are accounts that stated the blow of the axe was so ferocious that it didn't need to cleave the head from their shoulders, but one blow towards the parts, like say right here, like they give different quotes, like say to the upper arm or to the neck, and their li heads lay limb and bare and so fall with their bodies. Uh, that's technically saying that one, one impact is enough to kill you. Oh, I'm kind of wondering what might happen if he did this to the limbs soon. Oh, that's going to be scary. Uh, I hit behind. Behind with the uh, beak. Oh, I meant to get a better. We cut the entire back out through the beak. Let's go ahead and do one more. And yeah, there we go. That's what we wanted. It's gone. And blood everywhere. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, Connor. We're going to come back with the actual torso. We'll test some of your male armor. We'll test it against thrust. We'll test it against some hits. We'll try the breastplate and see how big a dent this thing can put in a breastplate. I am going to fix the edge. It has lost some of its sharpness. I'm not going to lie. There is a little bit of a bend in the actual edge, which is expected hitting armor. Stuff can happen. Yeah. There's no serious damage that can't easily be repaired on this axe. This is common axe damage from using an axe that uses that much force with a very fine cutting edge. Excellent video. I enjoyed it very much. I almost had heat stroke, but it was well worth it. Well, now wasn't that something, y'all? Now, as y'all saw, that was just the horrifying aspect of how horrifying Galagos warriors are. So, yeah. If y'all want to get an axe like this, I highly recommend doing so. I will leave links down below. As well, y'all, I will also highly recommend helping out Thane Thran first. I will leave links down below on Spotify and such to help him out as much as you can. Because one, he is on the verge of losing his house, so we need to help him as much as we can. I myself, though, have not been able to help out because unfortunately, due to uh, certain things I have to get done around my house, and plus, I also have to worry about a tree that looks like it's about five seconds from falling on my house. So it's, yeah, my neighbors have reluctantly uh, not been able to take care of or get rid of in the past few years by the looks of it, and these are what we call trash trees here in Texas or in farm countries, which are not the best when it comes to, because uh, one, they're perfect for forested areas, but for like, say, one by himself and there is a lone storm coming through, uh, there's probably a good chance it will fall apart. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't fallen apart now, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Now, I highly recommend helping out things right as much as y'all can, so that way we can help him out and hopefully he can get, uh, well, pretty much back up on his feet and all that. Now, I, he uh, actually has uh, comment, texted me and such on getting a, well, bigger axe blade like this model from the 16th century design, of which these were the late period Galaglass axes, and these were very horrifying, and there are many other accounts that stated these might have been all 10 times more dangerous than the one he's using, which is 7 inches, this is 12 inches, and this is a little bit heavier. Now, I had a buddy that made this for me, uh, the problem is, the reason I wasn't able to send this model to Thrand in the original part was because one, they were out of stock with, uh, material, and they were, like, literally, they were 
and also back ordered after back order and I told Thren it might have taken a year or so. So I don't know of when they're going to get uh, back up in stock. Hopefully they get it back up in stock soon. Uh, but I'll probably have to send him just the axe head itself, not the shaft, because unfortunately we they literally had a problem when uh, I ordered, like literally I ordered my axe from them and Unfortunately, it didn't uh, go well. It literally took a lot longer because apparently there was an incident. It got sent back for some apparent reason. I don't know what it was. It wasn't because, not because the item was long, or it might have been because I didn't. It wasn't because I didn't pay the uh, uh, length fee or whatever. I paid full fees or whatever that it was meant to have it sent. Unfortunately, the customs group didn't want to send this for some reason. I don't know why, and neither does my buddy. So, uh, for probably the future Gallo Glass Great Axe like this, which I'll have to have him sent to him uh, one day, I'll have to have it just sent with the axe head itself, which might be the best option. So, yeah. Although, uh, friend, you still gotta come up with a name for your axe, man. Honestly, my best bet is probably gonna name it Kindness. That way he just kills it with people with kindness. Yeah, that's a dad joke. Yes, I know. Although, mostly though, I prefer the going, Oh yeah! That way when everyone yells, Oh no! You go, Oh yeah! Uh, only people that know the old Kool-Aid series know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more, and as well, hopefully see you all in the next one. I have recently just got uh, done from dealing with a cold, so hopefully very soon, we hopefully next week, I will get right out there and do our Gallo Glass Chieftain or uh, Gallo Glass Captain's video of the said uh, 15th century, which will cover both the 15th and 16th century, because one, there's little, literally no difference in armor. The only difference would have been in the century, so yeah, there's like only like a couple of helmet, like one or two helmet designs. And then we will again get started on our later videos after that, such as the 16th century Gallo Glass Levy, or as they're called, the Gallo Glass uh, Sword Bearers, or Armor Bearers, or Sword Guard, and as well, finally, the 16th century Gallo Glass. So, hopefully see you all in the next one, like and subscribe for more, and as well, stay tuned for our upcoming videos on the series. And very soon, we will be doing a redoing series video again. We, yeah, that's right, we're going to go back into the redoing channel uh, series. And what we will be doing is, I'll ask y'all in my community area on which one we should actually do. Because one, I want y'all to actually say which video I should do next, because one, I'm going to pick from five redoing points in history. That it which could have changed differently, and I'll ask y'all which ones could have actually made more sense. Then after that, we will go back into another how-to series that I need to continue. I might choose Scotland again, I might choose the Britons, or uh, the Roman Britons anyways. Uh, maybe the Irish, going back to the ancient Irish, and then going up to the medieval Irish and so on and so on. So, hopefully y'all can actually stay tuned, and as well, uh, well, choose which one I can actually do next. Anyways, guys, this has been Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.